Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's webinar, Tokyo Dazzles the Senses, Attractions, Food, Nature, and More. This webinar will be presented by Shin Kawai, Director and Canadian Representative for Tokyo Tourism, as well as Steve Gillick, Travel Writer, Japan Specialist, and President of Talking Travel. I'm your host, Dan McDonald, Sales and Marketing Development Associate with Baxter Media. Just before we get into things, I'd like to let all of you viewers know that at the end of this webinar, you'll have the chance to ask questions. To do so, just type them into the Q&A section of the public chat box, which should be towards the right-hand side of your screen, and those questions will be answered in due time. And remember, this is a live session, so your patience is appreciated during any technical difficulties that might arise. Be sure to attend the full duration of today's webinar for a chance to win one of four prizes. Anyone that joins late or leaves early won't be eligible. Presenting first today is Shin Kawai, Director and Canadian Representative for Tokyo Tourism. Uh, Shin, I will now hand things over to you. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for taking the time to attend the webinar. My name is Shin Kawai of uh, Tokyo Tourism. In spite of the uncertainty caused by the uh, pandemic, I'm very happy to uh, know that uh, Tokyo and Japan uh, remain one of the uh, most popular destinations uh, for Canadian travelers. So. Our goal for today's uh, webinar is to uh, keep you up to date on uh, what's happening in Tokyo. I would like to start by showing our latest uh, video called Nothing Like Tokyo. So let's see the video. I hope uh, you enjoyed the video. As you can see, uh, Tokyo is a city of uh, contrast of old and new, but they're closely interconnected uh, and uh, that's how uh, new uh, innovations are created, whether it's uh, food, design, architecture, and so forth. Today, I would like to take you for a short uh, walking tour. So this is a half day uh, course that starts from Harajuku. You might uh, know this place very well. Our first stop is Meiji Jingyu Shrine. Meiji Jingyu Shrine. Um, this uh, shrine will take you uh, to the world of ancient uh, tradition and history. It is also one of the best uh, places to enjoy nature. Then, to back to Harajuku and uh, Omote Sando, where new fashion, design, and subculture are constantly created. Omote Sando, this area, is a very trendy area, but uh, originally uh, it was built as a main pathway to the uh, Meiji Shrine. So, again, you know, these places are connected to each other. And uh, your final destination on this tour is Shibuya. Uh, that's where you will find the world famous Scramble Crossing. 
in time for the uh, last Olympics, uh, Shibuya has gone through a complete uh, renewal. So if you are in Tokyo, you can't really miss uh, Shibuya. This is a view from the uh, rooftop of uh, Shibuya Sky, a new attraction. Okay, uh, next one is a one-day tour uh, that combines a walking tour with the uh, sightseeing of a cruise boat called a water bus. On this tour, you will start from new. A sky tree, you are, you know, looking at it uh, here, is a broadcasting tower, an architectural wonder uh, with the height of 634 meters. Then, uh, you walk through uh, Tokyo Mizumachi, a new shopping and leisure facility with a traditional shitamachi flair. Shitamachi, by the way, uh, means a traditional downtown area of Tokyo. So this is a 14-minute walk across to the other side of uh, Sumida River. Then uh, you will enter Asakusa area, probably the most uh, visited place in Tokyo probably uh, uh, in Japan, you know, as a whole. So here you will find the Sensoji Temple, uh, the oldest uh, temple in uh, Tokyo. In Asakusa, uh, you will be uh, immersed in uh, old Tokyo with a lot of uh, shopping, dining, and cultural experiences. From here, uh, you will take the uh, water bus on the Smitha River. Tokyo was originally uh, developed as a city of water, and uh, taking this boat trip is one of the best way to experience Tokyo. The water bus will take you to Odaiba, the uh, major entertainment island in Tokyo Bay, a perfect uh, location for your family trip uh, with a lot of entertainment uh, for your kids. Uh, actually, a very, very popular uh, with uh, young kids. After a few uh, train rides from there, uh, you will end up at another Tokyo landmark, uh, Tokyo Tower. Uh, this was built uh, back in 1958, 333 meters tall. And uh, back then, it was the tallest uh, building in the world. Uh, night uh, illumination of uh, this tower is very beautiful and uh, actually uh, quite popular at dating spot. Uh, our office, uh, official sort of tourism site is uh, Go Tokyo. So you just simply uh, type in Go Tokyo and you get this site. And uh, on this site, you know, you can also check the latest uh, information about the COVID-19 situation of Tokyo. The Omicron variant is uh, sort of uh, concerning, but I'm hoping that uh, eventually Japan will uh, start accepting uh, foreign visitors uh, sometime this year. But uh, unfortunately, I can't really tell when, but uh, hopefully soon. And on this site, uh, please also check uh, out the uh, travel trade section. And you find a lot of uh, useful information, and uh, including uh, free uh, stock photos and uh, footage. And this is how you uh, contact us. Um, okay, uh, you can reach me anytime. Uh, this is the uh, office uh, phone number, but uh, I can give you my uh, uh, cell phone number, which is 647-205-3297. And uh, our website uh, right here, uh, jcinteractive.ca, has all the uh, back numbers of our newsletter. So uh, please uh, visit this. OK, thank you very much uh, and for your attention. And now I'd like to introduce uh, Mr. Steve Gillick, uh, president of Talk, uh, Talking Trouble. Uh, he has visited uh, Tokyo 19 times. And he's the best person uh, to talk about uh, Tokyo uh, with a Canadian uh, perspective. So, Steve. Thank you very much, Jim. Well, as you could see, Tokyo is one exciting destination. Condé Nast Traveler, a luxury travel and lifestyle magazine, named Tokyo, 
Tokyo as world's top city in its annual Reader's Choice Awards 2021 survey based on 800,000 votes cast. Have we piqued your interest? Tokyo is a vibrant megacity where the Tokyo brand old meets new not only describes the blend of the past with the present, but also identifies the city as a dynamic example of how visitors can interact with attractions, architecture, food, nature, festivals, shopping, history, and culture. And Tokyo is a magnet for travelers with special interests that may range from nature, hiking, waterfalls, and wellness, to exploring the rugged coast of Tokyo's many islands and onto museums, art galleries, and cherry blossoms. This presentation will provide insight into why Tokyo is a great destination for your clients and why Time Out Magazine called it one of the greatest, safest, and coolest destinations on the planet. Just to introduce myself, that's me, Steve Gillick, indulging in one of my favorite Tokyo pastimes, exploring new neighborhoods. We heard about the area near the Tokyo Sky Tree, filled with narrow alleyways, food and flower shops, and perfect for a friendly early morning stroll and great picks. The neighborhood is called Mukojima, and you can access it on the subway on the Tobu Skytree line. The little bird, by the way, is a common kingfisher. In Japan, it's referred to as a kawasemi, or river cicada. And I'll tell you where your birding clients can find one later in the presentation. In the April 2019 feature article in National Geographic magazine, Tokyo was referred to as the node through which the world connects to Japanese culture. And when we talk about Tokyo old meets new, we can see how the city has evolved with the times, blending the old and the new to stay relevant and engaging. This is the Nezu Museum. The bamboo wood natural design reveals that it was designed by architect Kengo Kuma. It's located in Tokyo's upscale fashion, food, and architecture area called Amote Sando. Aside from the incredible collection of calligraphy, painting, sculpture, and ceramics, the serene gardens in the back of the museum with ancient stone lanterns are a huge attraction for locals and tourists. It's a peaceful oasis smack in the middle of a bustling city. Another example of Tokyo old meets new is a visit to Asakusa. On the left, you see the main gate, the Thunder Gate, marking the entrance to Sensoji, the oldest temple in the city, established in the year 645. It's one of Tokyo's most popular attractions, as thousands arrive daily to visit the temple, the five-story pagoda, the gardens, and Nakamise, the ancient shopping street, now filled with souvenir, craft, and food stalls. Pictured on the right is the Tokyo Sky Tree in Sumida. It became the tallest tower in the world when it reached its height of 634 meters in 2011. The tower is used for broadcasting and is one of the most thrilling observation decks you'll ever experience. If you're brave, you can walk in the glass floor on the 340 meter level and then ascend to the 450 meter level. Tokyo has a reputation for, for being one of the best food cities in the world. Restaurants cater to every taste and budget. When I'm in Tokyo, one night we may spend $60 to $120 for two at a seafood izakaya, sake included, and then the next night buy dinner at a convenience store or department store for $20 to $30 for two, including two cans of beer. The Michelin Guide Tokyo handed out stars to 203 restaurants in 2021, more than any other city in the world. And this includes one restaurant called Hachigo, which is the only ramen shop in the world to be Michelin rated. Pictured above, you see on the gold tray, a sushi lunch at Suigian, the restaurant featuring no theater performances. In the top right is a dish called Tori Kamameshi, steamed rice with chicken, kadro, and vegetable. So good. And in the bottom right is tebasaki, grilled salt and pepper chicken wings in the yakitori restaurant. They were melt in the mouth good. You're going to want to accompany your good eats with great drinks. Sake is always my first choice. You can taste and try the many different varieties of sake in specialty shops, like in the lower left, or in a kakuuchi, 
uh, the top photo, which is a liquor store where you can taste the product and order a snack. And also you can taste it at stand-up sake bars and seasonal sake festivals. Sake is around 15% alcohol. But there's more to drink. On Tokyo's islands and in Western Japan, shochu is the drink of choice. That's me on the bottom right at a self-serve shochu tasting stand on the island of Oshima, the island known for the origin of the Godzilla legend. Shochu is between 20 to 30% alcohol. While many drink shochu straight up or on ice, some shochu drinks called chuhai are mixed with green tea, grapefruit juice, lemon juice, or even cream soda. Craft beers are also very popular in Japan. So too is Japanese whiskey. You may want to treat yourself to a bottle of Yamazaki 55-year-old single malt whiskey for 3,300,000 yen, roughly $30,000 US. But prices vary according to where it's sold. Tokyo refers not only to the city of Tokyo, but also to Tokyo Prefecture. First, let's take a look inside the city. The writer Jane Jacobs said that the best way to know a city, to feel its mashed up power, is to walk it. And the best way to look at this mega city of nearly 14 million inhabitants is to see it as a collection of fascinating neighborhoods. On each visit, I take the Tokyo Metro to a station I've never been to before and explore the area. Shops, buildings, parks, gardens, attractions, and maybe even a sake bar or two. Here are some examples. If you want to visit the Imperial Palace in the East Gardens, get off at either the Otomachi or Takabashi metro stations and walk. There are signs in the station in English telling you which exit to take. If you want to explore the wonderful historic neighborhood of Ningyocho, pictured on the right, just get off at the Ningyocho station. And if you want to get absorbed in Tokyo's past, visit the Toshogu Shinto, Sh Shinto Shrine in Ueno Park at the Ueno Park Station. Each of Tokyo's neighborhoods has its own unique personality, and each is ripe for exploration. Here's the transit map for metropolitan Tokyo. Looks easy, right? Well, there are different subway lines indicated by the different colors, and each one intersects with another line. So it's actually quite easy to trace how to travel from your hotel in Ginza up to Ueno to visit the Amayoko Outdoor Market or the Toshogu Shinto Shrine, or to travel from your hotel in Shinjuku to visit the Imperial Palace and the East Gardens in Otomachi. It takes about 15 minutes to get a comfort level on the Tokyo Metro, and then you'll be traveling like a local. But if you need help, the staff at each station speak English. But let the new Tokyo Metro app do all the hard work for you. For those who are comfortable using cell phone apps, you can download the Tokyo Subway Navigation app. I did this in preparation for my next trip to Tokyo, hopefully in March. The app is available in English and is really easy to use. Not only does it provide you with the route on the Tokyo Metro, but it also tells you the nearby tourist spots and the correct station exit to take. Very, very helpful. With the toilet as a symbol of Japan's hospitality culture, Shibuya Ward in Tokyo inaugurated 17 public toilets designed by top architects, such as Kengo Kuma and Tadao Ando. On the lower left is the 7th Street Park toilet designed by Kazu Sato. But street art takes on different forms. On the lower right, you can see Robert Indiana's love statue. On the topic of art, at the top left, you can see the unmistakable pumpkins of artist Yayoi Kusama. She prefers pumpkins as they're attractive in color and form, but also tender to the touch. And you can find these and other Kusama works at her museum in Shinjuku. On the top right, the whirl of color is another amazing exhibit by Team Lab Borderless. The original exhibit was recently declared to be the world's most visited museum by the Guinness World Records. The new exhibit called Planets has been referred to as digital art gone wild. You remove your shoes and socks and rock through water to experience a borderless world. It's known as body immersive artwork. And you can even dine on digital art. This is vegan ramen uzu 
the restaurant in the Team Lab Borderless Planets exhibit. Travelers these days want to indulge in their special interests when they travel. For those who love history, culture, and theater, there are traditional no theater performances. Traditional taiko drumming performances and workshops are available as well as more contemporary interpretations, such as the one pictured on the lower left called Mangekyo. The top right is a glimpse of Tokyo's intriguing robot culture. Meet the front desk clerk at the Henna Hotel in Ginza. And Family Mart, the convenience store chain, is launching robotic customer service clerks at some of their Tokyo stores. In the bottom right is an example of Ikebana, the art of a flower arranging based on movement, balance, and harmony. In fact, many chefs study Ikebana to perfect Moritsuke, the art of presenting food. Here, for example, is a sushi platter from Noboro Shibata, the Ikebana trained chef at Wasuke, one of our favorite eateries located in Kapabashi, another great neighborhood to explore. I was also always fascinated by Tokyo architecture from the first time I saw the Cocoon Tower in Shinjuku. Add to this the V88 building in Ginza and the five-story pagoda at the ancient Sensoji Temple, plus so many other eye-opening structures as you walk the streets of the city. What's new in Tokyo? Lots, but here's just a few examples. National Olympic Stadium Tours in Shinjuku. The stadium was designed by Kengo Kuma for the 2020 Summer Games, with seating for 68,000 to 80,000 spectators. The Zukan Museum in Ginza. Walk, meet, explore, discover. In this world, you can travel freely, observe the behavior of creatures, and contemplate the nature of the earth. The Haruki Murakami Library. At present, it's only open to Tokyo residents, but check before you arrive. It was designed by Kengo Kuma and features the world of Murakami, books, vinyl records, coffee house, a jazz bar, and an audio room. And the Miyashita Park in Shibuya, a 300 meter long multi-purpose facility that includes a shopping mall, restaurants, cafes, a hotel, a skateboard park, a bouldering wall, and a beach volleyball court. Get depressed or stressed? Go shopping, feel great. It's an easy fix, and it even works well when you're in a great mood. It's shopping therapy, and Tokyo excels at providing tons of choices in department stores and specialty stores. I buy all my travel writing notebooks at the Daiso 100 yen shop in Harajuku. We head to the outdoor Amiyoko market in Ueno for deals on New Balance sneakers. Bic Camera is our go-to store for cell phone accessories, camera equipment, and even sake, and Muji and Uniqlo are our standard for clothes. Wow, this is Tokyo? This is actually a slogan used by one of the bike rental companies in Okutama, known as Tokyo's nature getaway. Okutama comprises a huge area, two hours west of the city by train, but still within Tokyo Prefecture. You'll find forests, rivers, lakes, canyons, waterfalls, hiking paths, as well as craft beer, a sake brewery, and delicious local cuisine. And just consider a mountain in Tokyo or a forest path or a waterfall, each has its own unique personality. It's a meditative health and wellness experience made in Tokyo, expressing the taste, touch, smell, feel, sound, and soul-soothing uniqueness of Tokyo culture. Shinrin-yoku translates as forest bathing, that is, bathing in the ambience of the forest to promote health through positive, physical, emotional, and even spiritual experiences. Okutama is one of the power spots for forest bathing, as well as for soaking in the outdoor onsen, which are hot baths. Mount Takao is easily accessible by train about one hour outside of Tokyo. You can arrive at the summit of the 599 meter mountain by walking the trails by cable car, or on the chairlift. Along the way, you'll find souvenir stores, restaurants, sake tasting, and the Yakuo Inn temple, noted for its Tengu statues and huge Tengu masks. Tengus are long-nosed demon-like creatures who act as messengers of the gods. They scold evil people 
while protecting good people, such as travelers. And yes, you can even go island hopping in Tokyo. The Izu Islands are as close as a ferry ride away or a short flight past Mount Fuji, while the Ogasawara Islands lie 1,000 kilometers south of Tokyo, but are still part of Tokyo Prefecture. Highlights of Ogasawara include snorkeling, scuba, swimming with wild dolphins, hiking, birding, savoring local seafood, and enjoying the nightlife at the Heart Rock Cafe, named after the huge natural-shaped pink heart on the mountain in Chichijima. But if you want something closer, you can take a one hour and 45 minute high speed ferry ride from Tokyo to Oshima, where it is said Godzilla is waiting inside Mount Mihara to emerge at the next eruption expected sometime soon. The island is known for hiking to the summit of Mount Mihara to see the steaming vents or lying on one of the black sand beaches or taking photos of the geological formations and the incredible scenery around the island. We spent three days on Hachijojima in 2018, but could have spent much longer, meeting the friendly locals, taking in the spectacular scenery, exploring hiking trails and waterfalls, and eating local specialties like stinky fish. And yes, it really is stinky. Miyakajima is great for nature photographers, hikers, foodies, and those who love to meditate over breathtaking scenery. You can even see a blue sea turtle, like the one who swam by to check us out. On a recent TV show, nature historian David Attenborough remarked on how the COVID pandemic has opened the eyes of many people to the beauty of nature around them. And for many, this has manifested itself in spending more time outdoors and appreciating birds. It's a way to melt anxiety, participate in environmentalism, and enjoy the treasure hunt of discovering new sights, colors, and sounds every day. There are many parks in Tokyo, including urban parks, nature recreation parks, national parks, national gardens, and more. Some of these photos were taken in Senzo Kuike Park, about a 30-minute train ride west of the city, but still in Tokyo Prefecture. The rare Hahajima Meguro, that little yellow bird, was attracted by the bird call whistling of our 80-year-old nature guide on Hahajima while we were in the Ogasawara Islands. From high-end hotels and luxury real cans to boutique hotels and trendy hostels, Tokyo has accommodation options to suit every taste, lifestyle, and budget. Here are just a few ideas. The Four Seasons Hotel Tokyo at Otamachi opened in September 2020. It sits on the higher floors of a 39-story building. Every room, restaurant, and even the gym has a stunning view of the city or the Imperial Palace. And on a clear day, you can even see Mount Fuji. The new Retro Capsule Hotel in Shibuya is a retrofit of a traditional capsule hotel with soothing colors and a sauna and fits into the new trend toward luxury capsule accommodation. The Hoshinoya Tokyo is a luxury ryokan. It offers beautiful Japanese-style rooms, an afternoon sake tasting, and a wonderful onsen, or hot bath. And it's only steps away from Tokyo Station and the Imperial Palace. And then there's a favorite of mine, the more mid-priced Courtyard Marriott in Ginza, located a short walk to the old Tsukiji Seafood Market, the Kabuki Theater, and the Tokyo Metro Subway, with lots of shopping and restaurants in the area. One of my favorite Tokyo resources is Time Out Tokyo. You can subscribe for free to Time Out Tokyo, and every Thursday you can see what's going on in the city, plus you can access great lists of things to do. The seven best nature escapes, 10 monsters you'll meet on the streets of Tokyo, five best restaurants for spicy food, etc. It's a gold mine for special interest travelers and foodies. And as you can see from their November 24th, 2021 issue, it's all about what we refer to as infectious enthusiasm, getting excited about a destination and then spreading your joy to your clients. I hope that through this presentation, you've got the impression that Tokyo is a unique destination reflecting a blended history of Tokyo old and Tokyo new. 
whether you're exploring the neighborhoods of urban areas or the beautiful scenery of the nature areas and islands, Tokyo continues to dazzle the senses, bombard them, if you will, with ongoing, refreshing, exciting, serendipitous experiences. This is the stuff that treasured travel memories are made. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Steve. Now, uh, I would like to introduce uh, five Japanese uh, suppliers, you know, that are interested in uh, working with uh, Canadian agents and tour operators. I hope uh, you will find them uh, useful for your trip planning. And also, uh, I just like to make a, a small, small announcement that uh, we have a few uh, prizes to give away. So your name uh, will automatically uh, be included you know, in the draw. So please stay uh, to the end. We have five videos. The first uh, company is called Japan Dream Tour. So this company is a land operator uh, that can arrange your group tours, mice, family tours, as well as FIT and backpackers tours. So here is a video. video is from a company called Toki. Uh, this company specializes in uh, arranging your cultural experiences in Tokyo and elsewhere. So here's the video. I'd like to introduce about our company and what we do. We provide travel and cultural experiences mainly to the luxury sector and mice groups. We've been providing experiences to Fortune 500 companies and top universities and have been covered in media as well. You can find more information about our cultural experiences and um, our travel, how we do travel on our website for our original bespoke experiences. You can come to the experience section and find out what we do. For example, we have very authentic tea ceremonies, um, cooking with Michelin star chefs, and crafts with top artisans, also some contemporary tours as well. During COVID, we started um, virtual experiences as well. We've been mainly providing this to corporations, and we can, we can send kits abroad as well. So um, this would be really used for, for um, company team building and team bonding events. So thank you and please um, come to our website for more information. Okay, the next one is NTA, a Nippon Travel Agency. Uh, probably uh, you might know this company, one of the uh, 
leading uh, land operators in Japan. Here we go. Hello, my name is Sayo Takahashi from Nippon Travel Agency. Thank you for the opportunity to introduce our company today. And NTA was established in 1905 and it's been known as a leading travel agency with the longest history in Japan. We provide quality travel, not only responding to the needs of today, but also for seeking and meeting future demands. And here are our strengths. Uh, we, we maintain a good relationship with suppliers and have enough purchasing power. And we have marketing and speaking staff, of course, including French. And we have a lot of experience in creating custom made tours. So we are confident to find the process to successfully create your tours. And we have six specialized departments like this. And as all these departments are well linked by a cross section team, we can cope with any request from customers. And we are also one of the first travel agencies that started considering travel as related to a sustainable environment. To realize our value, considering the us and the environment, the happiness of people, and the evaluation of culture is essential. So we take an oath to work on achieving SDGs while careful consideration of what can be done today. And here are some examples, our, our previous examples, and we have just started these two programs. One is a carbon offsetting program, and the other one is reducing plastic by using stainless bottles with a high cooling and warming effect during the tour. You can bring them back to home as a souvenir. So, even though we are the oldest one, but also looking at future growth and improvement. If you are interested, interested in our outstanding service, please don't hesitate to contact us. We are very much looking forward to being with you. Thank you. Hey, that was uh, NTA. And the next one is uh, JTB International. Um, very well-known one. Uh, the company was established over 100 years ago and uh, has offices uh, throughout the world. Hello everyone, I'm Ami from JTV Global Marketing and Travel. JTV was founded over 100 years ago to promote international tourism to Japan. Now we are the number one DMC in Japan. As Japan specialists, we offer unforgettable experiences and adventures for visitors from all around the world. We have great experience to handle any kind of trip, such as VIP trips for loyal families, worldwide sports events, and international political conferences. Our one and only itinerary always includes special unique contents, such as interaction program with locals or visiting the off-the-beaten tracks to see the hidden part of Japan. Looking forward to welcoming your guests in Japan. Okay, the last one is the uh, Park Hyatt Tokyo. Uh, it's one of the uh, luxury hotels in Tokyo. I hope uh, you enjoy.
Okay. Um, for these uh, five uh, companies uh, we sort of uh, introduced to you, uh, we will send uh, their information uh, by email, you know, after this uh, webinar. So uh, please uh, uh, keep that in mind. And uh, I would like to thank you, you know, for uh, staying, you know, with us, you know, for this presentation. And now uh, I would like to sort of uh, ask our host, uh, Dan, and uh, he will uh, facilitate a short uh, Q&A session for us. Daniel. Thank you so much, Shin. That was fantastic. And thank you very much, Steve Gillick, for your presentation as well. Uh, a few questions were submitted during the webinar, and one of them uh, was answered by you just now, Shin. So um, Harold had asked, are you going to send us the contact details of these local operators? Uh, it's too fast for me to write down. And you answered that question already. <laughs> so yeah, yes. we'll, be, we'll include yeah, that we'll, in the follow-up we'll correspondence. We'll send uh, each uh, company's information and then after this uh, webinar, yes. Yeah, fantastic. So we'll get that to you guys by, um, by tomorrow. I right. Um, oh, uh, Jen wanted to know, is there an observation level in SkyTree? Yes. So, uh, you know, obviously, uh, SkyTree uh, is not only uh, like a broadcasting tower, but uh, it's a major sort of, uh, you know, tourist attraction. You know, so they have uh, gift shops and uh, observation desk and uh, sometimes, you know, like uh, cultural programs, you know, and so on. You know, so like uh, you can do a lot there. There, there are actually two observation decks. One at, right. uh, I think it's 350 meters, and then the top one is 450 meters. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty impressive. Ah, very nice. That's great. And um, Cheryl asks, uh, I have clients doing a stopover four nights. Would you recommend a full day tour to Mount Fuji? Yeah, I think uh, it's uh, one of those things, you know, like uh, people might want to do. Um, Although there are a lot of uh, wonderful places, uh, you know, inside uh, Tokyo. So, like, uh, you know, uh, please uh, send me a note and then uh, we can just, uh, you know, introduce you to uh, other sort of a poss possible sort of options. Yeah, but uh, Mount Fuji is uh, mm -hmm. something that you can visit. Yeah. Yeah, I can confirm that seeing it in person is um, quite breathtaking. It's very nice. Oh, yeah. Very awe-inspiring. And Dominique asks, uh, what's the best month to visit? This month and the most popular uh, time of the year is uh, uh, obviously uh, cherry uh, blossom time, and that happens uh, from the sometimes uh, like uh, you know uh, this happens you know from the southern part of Japan and then uh, travel all the way to the northern part of Japan, and then the earliest uh, cherry blossom you know you can probably see at the beginning of uh, March in the southern part of Japan, around Tokyo maybe a middle uh, to uh, the later part of. Uh, March and then uh, goes on as you go north. So, uh, but uh, you know, like you can always uh, uh, watch uh, this uh, cherry blossom. Uh, I, I don't know the forecasting and so on, but uh, that's a general idea. Right. Yeah, uh, great advice. April, uh, March, April. Yes. Great. Yeah. Thanks, Jen. And uh, Cheryl asks for the Digital Art Museum. Do you recommend for clients on a tight schedule? Uh, max four hours they have on day number two of their stopover. So in other words, I guess she's asking, will it take a long time if they only have four hours there? He, well, yeah, I mean, to properly enjoy it, I haven't been to the Planets one. I've been to the original uh, Team Lab board of us. Uh, the Planets one started after um, uh, travel was restricted to Japan uh, due to the pandemic. So I, I haven't made it there yet. I've tried to get there four times. Um, but the original one, I would say two hours would be the minimum um, to see it. And uh, there was also even the ticketed lineup. You still had to wait in your ticketed lineup. So that took maybe 20 minutes. So if you only have four hours, that would be kind of tight. OK, yeah, that's good to keep in mind for sure. And Jenna asks, what was the name again of the company in the first of the five videos? Thanks. Japan Dream Tour. Yeah, Japan Dream Tour. Right. And definitely, Jen, will include some of that information in the uh, email that goes out to you guys tomorrow. Yes, uh, we will send you know, to each uh, participant you know, of this webinar. Yes. Perfect. Yeah. 
And let's see. I just want to make sure we get to everybody. Um, Susan asks, will there be uh, fam tours available soon for Tokyo? Actually, uh, Tokyo itself, you know, doesn't organize uh, uh, fam tours, you know, but uh, sometimes you know, the Japanese are large, uh, you know, uh, tour companies or airlines and uh, often uh, Japan tourism, like JNTO, would uh, organize uh, those uh, fam tours. Uh, so uh, I would uh, check, you know, the JNTO site and uh, contact, you know, airlines and so on, uh, hopefully. Uh, and, you know, some of the tour operators, you know, will organize that. But uh, Tokyo, you know, uh, itself, you know, doesn't uh, uh, have a regular sort of uh, fam tours. Right, of course. Well, that's good for them to know anyways. And then Susan as well is asking about... Um... Oh, sorry, Dominique was asking, uh, are there special program rates or some kind of discounted rates for travel agents? Uh, for, from uh, Japanese suppliers? As she didn't specify, but yeah, I figured okay. that would be to the suppliers and not from Tokyo. Yeah, from the suppliers, you know, you can always uh, uh, contact them and uh, discuss, you know, those uh, things. And uh, sometimes it makes sense, you know, like to bring back uh, more, you know, uh, travelers back uh, to Tokyo and Japan. I think, uh, you know, they would be interested in, uh, you know, discussing those uh, options. Excellent. Yeah, that sounds great. Okay. So I do believe that wraps up the Q&A. just want to confirm here. Uh, we got a bunch of thank you messages here in the chat box uh, from Maria, Jen, one from Cheryl. Thanks so much, everyone. Thanks to all for being, th thanks to all of you for being here. And uh, oh, one final question here in the Q&A. Uh, Martine's wondering uh, if, there are, if there are any French documentation available uh, for Tokyo or for Japan. Um, for Tokyo, uh, you know, the Go Tokyo uh, site uh, has a French uh, sort of a site. So uh, you can just choose, you know, like uh, usually, uh, like, uh, you know, uh, the first page, you know, as you, it opens up, you know, then uh, you can choose different languages. That includes uh, Chinese, uh, Spanish, uh, French, uh, English, of course, and Japanese, you know, those uh, languages are available. Uh, there might be other languages that, that might be available, but uh, yeah, definitely French uh, okay. site uh, is there. That's great. That's really good to know that that's available uh, on, on the website there that you can just change the language. Mm -hmm. so yeah, that definitely answers that, that question there. Uh, so I do believe we've got to everybody. Let me just confirm that here. Definitely another couple of thank you messages here. Yeah, that pretty much wraps things up. So from all of us here at Baxter Media uh, and from Tokyo Tourism, I would like to thank everyone for attending. If you happen to miss part of the webinar today, uh, the recording will be made available tomorrow on the Baxter Media YouTube channel. So if you go on YouTube, uh, search for Baxter Media, look for the blue and black logo against the white background. Uh, and in terms of the prize draw, the winners are going to be contacted over the next few days. Uh, so I'd like to give a huge thank you to Shin Kawai and Steve Gillick for presenting for us today and for sharing such uh, such great content in their presentations. It was so great having you both here virtually yeah. with us. And uh, I really like to thank uh, uh, everyone you know who uh, participated in inspired by uh, their busy schedule. And uh, our job is really to uh, keep you informed. You know, so uh, whenever you need any questions. Uh, please just uh, feel free to contact us, you know, our office, uh, either through email or phone, or you can call my cell phone, and I'm happy to answer any questions I can. Wonderful. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Great having you here today. Okay, thank you. Bye, everyone. Take care, and uh, keep an eye on your inboxes tomorrow for the follow-up communications, including the link to the webinar recording and the uh, contact information for those suppliers. Bye-bye, everyone. Take care. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Until next time.